Warning! The episode you are about to listen to most likely contains graphic language, details of violence and murder, and may not be suitable for all audiences. Listener discretion is advised. What's up, everybody? Hey there. Sorry we're coming to you a week later than previously scheduled. Yeah, some shit came up. May's a pretty busy month for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're pretty glad that everybody's birthdays are over. Yes. And Mother's Day. Mother's Day. And a couple little illness things came up. Nothing serious. And now no. here we are. Here we are. Yeah, we are uh, just almost at May long weekend, which hopefully brings kind of like a end or a start of the end of the restrictions of the pandemic and kind of get us back to what's normal anymore. I don't even know, like get us back somewhere that's relatively normal. I really think that after they end the restrictions that people aren't even going to know how to act proper anymore. No, even like, like... I I think I've said this before, (laughs) but like even watching movies, I'm like, oh my God, those people aren't wearing a mask and I'm (laughs) such a large group. (laughs) But you see everything like in the States, almost everybody I think is kind of like got their full vaccination and they're pretty much returning to normal life. So that gives me hope. Yeah. My friend sent me a video the other day of his little town square in California and everyone was just like totally maskless and cruising around and there's music playing and yeah, there was an MMA fight, like a UFC fight. And it was like the crowds were huge and like there was nobody wearing masks. Nobody was wearing masks. Everybody was like shoulder to shoulder, sweating on each other. Probably making out. Probably. Good. Power to them. 55% of our population is vaccinated now. So Good. Well, I mean, and then you bring, that kind of brings us to some people really believe in getting vaccinated. I think obviously that's going to end the pandemic. So that's kind of all I give a shit about anymore is, you know what, if you're going to put a GPS tracker in me or whatever, what other people think, the 5G. Gonna, 5G or whatever, you know, obviously everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but I mean, I just want this shit to be over. So, well, and another thing, like, I don't think any of us are like totally not freaked out about getting the vaccination. Like they, you think about the time that it took them yeah, to but make it it was pretty sped up it was but the whole world was like you know at one yeah. joint cause so the whole yes. world is like let's get this fucking shit moving so yeah. you know the smartest people in the world obviously that are already involved in vaccination manufacturing they're obviously just putting you know three heads or four heads are better than one and the whole world was affected by this so obviously the whole world wants it to end so the whole world is going to come together to make that happen so yeah. yeah, so I just got my vaccine last week. Yeah, and you still got your arm. Your birthday. And... <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'm alive still. Yep, and I did not get a vaccine yet, but I did turn 29, so Yay. that was fun. You know, 29 is an age that you say you are forever on now. So perfect. When you're 40, you just say, "Oh, I just had my 29th birthday." No so that was my first me. 29th birthday. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Well, so. this next year will hopefully bring lots of more excitement and lots of other shit rather than just sitting at home and ordering takeout because that's the highlight of my year so well and this this podcast obviously yeah i mean the podcast grew out of this so yeah so thankful being yeah so thank you guys for joining us on this lovely adventure and i hope you guys still listen when you got other shit to do like yeah have a real life again (laughs) well episode 19 today yeah yeah crazy. and today uh mom is in charge of the episode so in i guess celebration of mother's day she chose <laughs> uh, um a case of matricide yeah it's our first case of somebody killing their mother so happy mother's day <laughs> what way even though off we me. fucked up and didn't bring it to you when we were supposed to last week no That's okay but it's better better yeah, it's we like to make you guys mother's wait day. yeah Maybe maybe make it the week after Mother's Day to hear about someone killing their mother, right? Yeah, so I don't know if you guys have any guesses about which case we're doing this week, but this one is a pretty infamous one. It's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, this one definitely is one that, like, every time I talk to someone about it that doesn't know the story, they're like, what? Well, I made my boyfriend watch the documentary when we were doing the research of this, yeah. and he was like... This is one thing I will say. Most cases that we bring you guys... I, this is my people might take this the wrong way, but most most cases that we bring you guys, the killer is you know 
not somebody that is pushed to kill that person or, you know, you can kind of see, maybe sometimes you can see like, okay, you know, maybe I can understand. But this case, I don't blame her one bit for killing her mom. Yeah. I don't. So t- today we're going to bring you, if you haven't guessed already, it is the murder of Dee Dee Blanchard, whose daughter... Claudine D.D. Blanchard. Yes, Claudine D.D. Blanchard, and she was killed by her daughter, Gypsy Rose Blanchard. So I'm sure you guys are probably familiar. There's been a couple of documentaries done, and I actually remember when it all hit the news. Mm -hmm. And they actually just did, I think it's on, I want to say, Hulu. No, Hulu. They they did like a, a remake, like not a documentary, but like a like a dramatic reenactment of what happened so i have yet to see that but this case is crazy so with that without further ado yeah we will jump right into episode 19 of murder with my mother it was june the 14th 2015 people were just hanging around and looking at their facebook accounts and like you regularly do like yeah like we all do regularly and there was a post that was coming from the sweet couple. Uh, actually, it, was, it wasn't a couple. It was a, a mother and daughter. They were that, basically like a couple because they were together all the time, side by side. Yeah, the so the mother, Dee Dee Blanchard, had a daughter who had a disability, many different illnesses and disabilities, and everyone in their neighborhood of Springfield, Missouri, loved them and helped them and gathered together to raise funds for them because they were her victim of victims of hurricane katrina right yes yeah, so we'll get to that part but the troubling thing that started this whole case was they shared a facebook account and there was a post on june the 14th that just said that bitch is dead that would be alarming and it's actually if you'd like to go look on facebook the account is called d D-E-E, GYP, G-Y-P, and that first post is still on there. Underneath it, it said, I stabbed that fat pig and raped her sweet daughter, but they've taken that part off. Oh. So we want to get back to the history of the whole thing and where it all started, and it all comes to fruition with the birth of Dee Dee Blanchard otherwise known as Claudine. Claudine. Yeah. And she was born in Louisiana in 1967. And by all accounts, she was not a very nice person. <laughs> no. Nobody in her family liked her at all. That's let's just for get to her that whole part. life. Yeah, she was a she's so there's sometimes people that are just born evil, you know, and they might not seem evil on the surface because I think every single person that met her was like, oh, and if you weren't related to her, but I don't know. I think the people closest to you, they just know, like, if you're an evil piece of shit, then you're, you can't really hide that from your family. I have a couple family members like that, so. Mom, you got a dog. A big dog, too. I do. He's pretty big. He's over 100 pounds. You ever take him anywhere and get, like, super stinky and, like... <laughs> Every single at least second day. Well, good. I'm glad I'm not alone that my dog likes to roll in the stinkiest stuff at the park. So, for those long, stinky car rides home, I just started using First Sense Dog Dry Shampoo. I also started using it, and it's awesome. It's a lifesaver. So, it is. First Sense. They're on Instagram, Facebook, and go to www.firstsense.ca. So she was one of five children, so big family, and apparently she was sweet as pie as long as she got her own way. Mm. And as soon as she did not get her own way, shit hit the fan. She would steal from you. There's accounts that she actually killed her own mother by not feeding her. Hmm. And she was a horrible person. Like, there's a documentary that we watched um, to prepare, and a lot of her family members were just like, she was evil. Yeah, like, like they wanted nothing to do with her. When she was 24 years old, she met a young man. A 17 year old young man. Yes, a 17 year old young man named Rod. Pretty sure that's illegal. 
But not probably in Louisiana. Well, it's actually pretty odd, really. I mean, it's if you go out with someone that's seven years younger than you later on when you're grown up, then it's not really that big of a deal. But really, if you're 24 and you're sleeping with a 17-year-old... Yeah, like, it's illegal. It is illegal. <laughs> but like I said, probably not in Louisiana, <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> so they dated for about six months, and all of a sudden, Dee Dee came up, knocked up. Well, and you know what happens when in the southern... I mean, it happens a lot in a lot of places, but especially in those southern states, if you get pregnant, you get married. <laughs> yeah, and Rod just thought, I just better marry this woman because I got her pregnant. And he was also of a juvenile mindset. He was 17 years old. Yeah, and if a 24-year-old, I mean, you're, again, it, okay, we've discussed this in opposite, like, you know, when we're, when we're young and old guys hit on us, and you're like, yeah. oh my god. But imagine if you're a 17-year-old boy, because essentially you're not a man yet. And a 24-year-old woman's paying attention to you. Yeah, and, you get and you're super and... horny, too, at that age when you're a 17-year-old boy. <laughs> yeah, so that's probably all you're thinking of. And then, again, you know, you get her pregnant, so you're trying to, you know, that obligation you have to fulfill that responsibility. Because you really, when you're 17, you're not mature, but you strive to be as mature as possible, I think. Yeah, and so he said, like, once they got married... He started to notice, maybe even a little before, that she was really, really strange. Like, she was um, talking about witchcraft all the time. And she also had a pet tarantula and would, With like... nothing against tarantulas, no. but... <laughs> but she was just a strange person. And he woke up on the morning of his 18th birthday and decided that he didn't want to be there anymore. And he was there for the wrong reasons. And so he left, Rod left before the baby was even born. Well, and, and I'm a firm believer that that is a better thing because if you already, you have to think if you ha bring a child into this world, like I thank God every day that you left my dad. I think I've probably said that on every episode, but literally just if, if he was already getting bad vibes, you know, like he really yeah. probably didn't want to be involved in that. It's better to just call it quits. <laughs> like, exactly. you know, people say like, oh, stay together for the kids. Like, fuck that shit. Break up for the kids, you know? Yeah. I mean, to give, in this case, the baby might have been better off with her dad. Yeah, around, no, yeah. You know? So, <laughs> yeah. So in 1991, Dee Dee gave birth to a baby girl who was slightly premature, but nothing big deal. She was... Yeah, lots of people are born premature. Yeah, she was healthy, and she wasn't actually super premature. She was just a little bit premature. Hmm. And they named the baby Gypsy Rose Blanchard. So Gypsy was a name that Dee Dee picked because she was like the name Gypsy, and Rod picked the name Rose because he was a big Guns N' Roses fan, which, which kind of... <laughs> 18 years old, that's what you're yeah, going to do. Yeah, exactly. After the baby was born... Rod was trying to be involved as much as he probably remembered to or cared to or whatever. <laughs> and around when Gypsy was around three months old, Dee Dee began to say that she had some health issues. So everyone was really concerned. Um, Dee Dee said that she had sleep apnea when she was three months old and was stopping breathing. So obviously that's concerning. Yeah, especially for a three-month-old. And really right off the bat, you're not going to think because who lies about that, right? So you, of course, are going to take that, you know, in stride because you think that the mother of your child is not going to just say that this baby has sleep apnea if they don't. That yeah. was the beginning of it, I guess, so. So by the time Gypsy Rose was five years old, uh, Dee claimed that she had a multitude of things wrong with her. So she claimed that she had... Um, vision problems, hearing problems, um, that she was mentally retarded. And when she was five years old, she was riding on the back of her grandfather's motorcycle and they got in like a little accident and Gypsy Rose got a scuffed knee, which no big deal. Yeah. But it was right after that, that Dee Dee started to claim that Gypsy couldn't walk anymore. Well, she started saying that she had a chromosome disorder. She said that's when that came out. Yeah. She said she had a chromosomal disorder and that she also had muscular dystrophy. So she took her to the hospital in Tulane and she had a muscle biopsy done and the doctor said, uh, no, she doesn't have muscular dystrophy. But then Dee kept making her ride in a wheelchair and... So just to touch on it, obviously you guys can kind of gauge that this is a mother that's giving her child medical diagnosis for no reason. So someone that does that, it's called 
Munchausen syndrome by proxy. So Munchausen syndrome is just when you are doing that to yourself, right? Making yourself sick. But Munchausen by proxy is when you have a child and the child is of good health and you are inducing sickness or illness or, you know, any kind of something to essentially gain attention. Yeah, it's an attention-seeking disorder. It's a disease, obviously a mental yeah, a mental and disorder. The exact cause of Munchausen uh, by proxy syndrome is not known, but some people think that the theories, like one theory is that the child was lost a parent at a young age or was abused themselves. It's like something that kind of forms as like a, just another mental illness. Yeah. But, but I could never imagine that. Like Dee Dee herself was fucking evil from the second she was yeah. born. So maybe she was just I born just, with it. So my son had seizures when he was six months. And like the thought of like even the attention that, that kind of people kind of give you is weird and it's uncomfortable. And it's very it's nice, obviously, to to feel like people, you know, like people are there for you and whatever. But that's not the kind of for for a normal, healthy, mentally healthy person. That's not the First of all, you don't want your child to struggle and suffer with something. I didn't. That was the worst part of our lives that we've ever had. Yeah. Like we were we were lucky that he was able to be medicated and eventually yeah. grow out were, of them. Yeah, they but... grew out of them, but it was that was the most terrible thing that's ever happened. Yeah, and even being in the hospital, like we were in the hospital for like 3 weeks and yeah. that was like more than enough. And then going to his appointments every 6 months was like that's more than enough. So I couldn't imagine actually inducing or making or or making it up or whatever you know that's fucking crazy so at one point um gypsy was jumping on the trampoline with her cousins she just got out of her wheelchair like she could clearly walk and was fine and she got out of her wheelchair and was jumping on the trampoline with her cousins and Dee Dee like flipped out screamed at her get back in your chair and all of a sudden like at five years old uh, Gypsy collapsed to the ground and started feigning that she was paralyzed. So she'd already had her that brainwashed by then. Well, and your mother or your parent in general or, an, a, you know, an adult that you were raised by is the person that you put the most trust in in the world, right? Your, whether that show be... show you everything. Exactly. So obviously, if that's how your mother is from when you're three months old, I was just saying, there's a video of, of, D, of Gypsy when she was one and the mom's like, where's your cranial? And she points to her head. Where, how old are you? She puts up one finger. How, you know, so she was a very smart girl, even baby. She was a very smart baby. So imagine how confusing it would be to know you can walk, <laughs> know that you're not, you know, you're actually able to do all these things, but yet you're being told and forced to not do them. Like that's so... And she went as far as having multiple surgeries on this poor child. She had her, some of her teeth removed. She had her eye muscles. She had her stomach lining wrapped around her, like put around her esophagus. And a feeding tube put in. And a feeding tube. Like we both used to work in the field of feeding people through, a, it's called a G-tube. The, first of all, the process to put a G-tube in is so painful, they don't even give you any kind of, they give you like a, an anest, like a little anesthetic, yeah, but, they, but they you're awake. Yeah. And like to put your, again, as your a mother, little baby you're supposed that. to protect, right? Yeah. You're not, again, you're not supposed to, to, why the fuck would you want your kid to have a feeding tube if they can just eat with their mouth? And the, the even more screwed up or not more but as screwed up thing is that d went and forged all of gypsy's medical records at the beginning and she was a historian she would just go in and tell the doctors what was wrong with her child and the doctors some of them would believe her and do these procedures because again why would a mother lie about that really is the first thought there was one doctor though that uh pretty the much neurologist the neurologist bernardo flasterstein and he actually noted the possibility of munchausen by proxy because he was like this isn't adding up he looked at gypsy's legs and said she and has was muscle like, tone yeah and, and muscle tone if you have muscular dystrophy your legs are skinny little like they're atrophied twigs, right they're yeah. atrophied you don't use them because you cannot walk clearly they're when she wasn't in public, she was probably walking around. So obviously her muscles still kept that muscle tone. So the doctor 
he did note it, but I think as soon as that would happen, she would pick up and pretty much move away. So after that, she moved in with her dad and his wife because her mom was already dead and he had a different wife. And yeah, because she starved her to death. <laughs> yeah, and there were reports that she was poisoning her stepmother with Roundup. Oh. But it was never proven. The mother, the stepmother stayed in the hospital for nine weeks and got better when she was away from D. Well, and you see, again, this, because it's called, what is it called? Mother Dead and Dearest? Yes, Mommy, Mommy Dead, Dead and Dearest. Dearest. That's what the, the documentary's called. And right off the bat, when the family of D is being interviewed, you can just tell nobody likes her. Nobody wants anything to do with her. Nobody, because... They said she's evil. Yeah. So, I mean, just take that for what you will. <laughs> So then uh, Hurricane Katrina came and um, Dee claimed that their apartment got destroyed, which I think it actually did. But then she said that all of um, Gypsy's medical records were destroyed. And at that point, she started forging um, her birth certificates and stuff and made her younger. So she started saying she was born in 1995 when she was born in 1991. And Gypsy actually didn't even know how old she was because Dee didn't keep her in school. She homeschooled her. Mm -hmm. And so Gypsy never went to school. She went to grade two. Yeah. And then pretty soon she was having more and more weird surgeries. And she even had her salivary glands removed mm -hmm. because she said she was drooling too much. Well, that's the thing because the medicines. So if you look at the list of medicines or there's even a picture of the medicine closet eventually when they're doing the investigation that Dee Dee was giving to Gypsy. So what was happening was she was inducing a lot of the sicknesses because she was medicating her for fucking cancer when you don't have cancer, medi medicating her for things that you don't need. Your body obviously is going to, because those are essentially poisons. Those are poisons yeah. that are, if you're a healthy person, there's no need for those to be in your body. They're going to create some kind of phantom illnesses that are associated with those medicines. There's no reason this, this child should be taking these. Well, and then they, um, someone at a homeless shelter said, you guys should move to Springfield, Missouri. There's, um, a Habitat for Humanity group there, which is a, a group that builds houses for the poor that would build you a house and oh yeah, because you your daughter's there had leukemia because, yeah. and like, so yes, at this point, uh, Dee Dee said she had leukemia also, she said she had seizures. And that is a really, that's really sad. And if you did know a single mom struggling with a daughter that had all these things, that's, that's horrible. And you would try to do as much as you can. I know they got like make a wish foundation, you know, they, she made a wish or whatever. They went to Disneyland. They went to Disney world several times. They went, they got this house, they got a wheelchair van. There was so um, surgeries, like surgeries. people paid for her dental surgeries. People, they stayed at Ronald McDonald House. They Every time they went to a different doctor, they were flown around for free. Um, Dee Dee was given money from the government and people were donating money and donating things for them. And obviously Dee Dee wasn't working this whole time. No, this and was her job. This was her con. Yeah, it was totally she a She made a living of conning the healthcare system and every single other thing that was attached to the healthcare system. And she was so good at it that when that message came up on Facebook, it's crazy. Like, everyone was like, oh my God, my friends, these are the two kindest people I know. Everyone was so worried about Gypsy, like, oh my God, please let me know if Gypsy's okay. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. So, in 2011... Uh, Gypsy saw a copy of her birth certificate and kind of started to clue in to what mm -hmm. was going on. And a Medicaid card. Yes. One of her real Medicaid cards. So she questioned it, but Dee just told her it was a mistake. And we didn't know this, but at the time, um, she was actually abusing Gypsy the whole time physically too. Mm -hmm. So she would hit her with coat, uh, coat hangers and, uh, wrap her fingers with stuff and... 
if you see any interview at all that they're in together, it, that is on video, she's holding her hand. And Gypsy later says the reason why is because if she said anything that she wasn't supposed to say, Dee Dee would just squeeze her hand really hard, almost to like she was going to break bones in her hand if she kept going, you know? Yeah, like she was wicked evil. Yeah, and Rod, the dad, said that he called Dee Dee, obviously, because he wasn't as involved because every time he would question anything, uh, Dee Dee would move further and further away from him. And and again, I think when you're young like that as a father with an older woman, I mean, obviously he's going to kind of give her the reins. It's a really sick kid. You know, obviously he's thinking, okay, mother knows best. But he called on her 18th birthday to say, like, happy birthday, Gypsy. And, and Dee Dee's like, ch -ch -ch -ch, like, don't you tell her that she's 18. And he's like, what do you mean don't tell her that she's 18? And I love his accent. Yeah. Like, super, super, like, by you. Um, and, yeah, he's like, what do you mean, you know, don't tell her she's 18? You know, well, you know, because she's she's mentally, you know, she's mentally, she's about 12. So we're just it's like, what the fuck? Like, she professed that she was mentally retarded in the age of seven for her whole life. Yeah, which is like. But she thought she was 14 when she was turning 18. Yeah. So that's just, just imagine being gypsy because, again, like I said, she was a very smart little girl. I think that she kept her very, very almost sedated, like. Like, she had her on a lot of medicine. Well, you so. think. She said later that she was on Xanax. She was on seizure medication. She was and on, I know what seizure medication yeah. does. Like, that... It, it makes you feel terrible. Yeah. So, in 2011, um, they went to a science fiction convention, a sci-fi convention, mm -hmm. because Dee Dee would let her do stuff like that because she could kind of fit in in costume in her wheelchair and she was at this point she was driving around in a motorized wheelchair Dee Dee was shaving her head because she told her she had cancer and she's like well we may as well just shave your head because she even shaved her own head like yeah <laughs> because your hair is gonna fall out anyway and so she always let gypsy dress in like disney princess costumes yeah, because it kept and, that that young juvenile you know like it and it was her... easier for people to believe she was retarded if she was wearing <laughs> stuff like that all the time yeah that she was mentally delayed yeah so when she was at the sci-fi convention and she knew at this point she clued into how old she was and like that shit was going down she knew she could walk well when you're manipulated for your whole life and you're raised by a manipulator you obviously are going to pick up some of those traits yeah. and you're going to because it who can manipulate you better than the person that you have been man manipulating all these years, right? Yeah. So she met, Gypsy met a 35-year-old man who's unnamed at a science fiction convention. And she left with him and went to his hotel. <laughs> good for her. And it was good, but it wasn't good because uh, Dee tracked down all of her internet activity and found her in like two hours. Yeah. And she brought forth one of the um the birth certificates that was forged and said to the guy like what are you doing you're with a 15 year old in a hotel room and the guy was like whoa whoa take her like yeah and she also had her declared mentally unfit so gypsy couldn't go to the police or, or else anything they'd be like, she's, like disabled. Yeah, she's disabled yeah. she just doesn't know what she's talking about so once she found her with the 35 year old man, she took a hammer and smashed her computer because uh, Gypsy had been going on the computer at night when Dee Dee was sleeping. Um, and so she smashed the computer and she said if she ever did something like that again, she was going to smash her hands. Mm -hmm. And she tied her up with handcuffs and a dog leash for two weeks. So finally... Uh, Dee Dee let Gypsy go on the computer again. She got her a new computer, but she was only to use it under supervision. And probably the account that was D Gyp Blanchard. She probably wasn't allowed yeah. to do much more than that. But being that she was the child of a manipulative person, she also found her ways. And and Gypsy just, I mean, not Gypsy, but wrote, Dee Dee looks like someone that would just go to bed early. She, well, yeah, <laughs> like she went to bed early. And then Gypsy essentially lived another life online. So in 2013, she went on a Christian dating site and met this man, I guess you'd call him, named Nick Go to John. And he was also an interesting character. Yeah, so he had Asperger's, or has, because he's still, still alive, but he has Asperger's, which is a, a form of ASD, so the Autism Spectrum Disorder. And 
he was actually arrested in April of 2013, right before he met Gypsy Online for lewd acts in public at a McDonald's. So pretty much he was he was jerking off in public at a McDonald's. For nine hours, apparently. <laughs> wow. So it all started out very innocently and cute, actually. Like, they started to talk to each other on this Christian dating site, and then... They exchanged numbers and, or not numbers, I guess, because Gypsy didn't have a phone, but they exchanged, um, Gypsy had a bunch of Facebook accounts. I think she had five Facebook accounts that were under different names. Probably just because she was so worried her mom was going to find out. Yeah, so she didn't want her fingers smashed or to be tied to the bed with a dog leash and handcuffs. But, um, yeah, so they were talking about getting married and what they would name their kids and Nick really had no idea what was going on with Gypsy at this time like he knew she wasn't allowed to do anything but he didn't know like the extent of it obviously I don't even know if Gypsy really realized the extent, the extent of it, extent of it. Yeah. yeah so Nick and Gypsy really wanted to be accepted in their relationship and get to know each other um but then they started talking about uh, a lot of sexually deviant stuff like Nick was talking um, about BDSM and I think he must have kind of introduced her to it because she didn't really have much exposure to anything. No, she was hung hanging out with her mom all day long. Like, I think that also when a, a guy at that time, you don't know how to even socialize really because you never have really had the chance to be social without your mom standing there. Yeah. So let alone sexual right yeah so they started out they were talking about bdsm and then he was telling her that he had multiple personalities and so she was very juvenile minded also at this point still so she made up all these different personalities for herself that would match the personalities he had and the relationship just grew and became more and more twisted they but, talked online for two years. Yeah, so and they were each other's port in the storm, basically. Yeah. There was a point where they wanted to meet in person, and Gypsy knew that Dee Dee was going to be taking her to the live-action Cinderella film at the theater. So she actually uh, took some money from Dee Dee and sent it, or she bought a bus ticket for Nick, and he came to Springfield because he was from another state. He came to Springfield and he, they, was, they, he was from Wisconsin, right? Yeah. And they both just met in a costume he was by himself <laughs> though. So that's kind of weird. She was dressed like a fairy princess or a Disney princess. And then she went out to use the washroom. They just pretended to run into each other, and then she went out to use the washroom, and he says that she drug him in the washroom, in the men's washroom, and forced him to have sex. Well, he's a pretty honest guy, yeah. <laughs> based on the interviews, and Asperger's, a lot of the time, that is part of having Asperger's. You are yeah, very, very honest. surface, right? You're yeah. very, what you're thinking, what you're... No filter. There's no filter. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, I mean, really, if Dee Dee... I'm surprised that she even let her use the bathroom alone, honestly, but... Yeah, so that's how Gypsy lost her virginity to Nick. In, in the, the handicap stall of the men's bathroom at the movie theater at yeah. Cinderella. At, at dressed as a princess. Well, at that point, I'm sure anything is romanticized because... <laughs> yeah. Looking, and, like, okay, just to go back to Dee Dee, she was quite beautiful. And, and, and again, I, I, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I'm a firm believer in that. But I think when you're an evil person... And you're beautiful and, you know, beautiful to other people that starts to go because you're so fucking evil on the inside. And if you look, if you look at pictures of Dee Dee when she gave birth to Gypsy in when she died, like she looks like an evil, just like an evil, evil, evil woman that ate the first version of herself. Yeah. Like <laughs> she used to be like quite, quite sexy and stunning yeah. looking for sure. Charm of 17 year old sexy. Yeah, she did. And then by the end, yeah, she just looked like a. <laughs> she I looked guess... like freaking John Wayne Gacy. Yeah, she did. She looked like a clown, evil clown. Ugh. Pretty soon the conversation between Gypsy and Nick started to shift to what was really going on at Gypsy's house. And Nick was very protective about Gypsy. And. But imagine hearing that. Imagine you're dating somebody for two years and then all of a sudden they're like, look. My mom is faking that I have all of these illnesses. I can actually walk. 
uh, just three of those things on the list would be enough to be like, what the fuck, let's get you the fuck out of there. Like, especially if that's somebody that you have really strong feelings for and, you know, that's something that, I don't know, he also said that he had evil personalities, right? So I think that in the case where you you have evil personalities, I mean, I don't know, but that's something that obviously you're going to want to help in any way you can. And I don't think that rules, obviously, anything out because really, I think she was probably pretty transparent with him about saying, you know, my mom has pretty much made it so that people think I'm disabled and I'll never be able to get away from her and I'll never be able to be with you. I read that she was actually planning to get pregnant and that was going to be the way that she would, that Dee Dee would accept Nick. But can you imagine? Dee Dee probably would have like oh. give her a homemade abortion. Yeah. With a pop bottle. God. She's so horrible. With a pop bottle? Well, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. I don't know. She's. Yeah, I don't put anything past that lady. No. And again, on this on our podcast, we never bash the vi- the victims, but this lady was not a fucking victim. <laughs> she had this coming, and I'm sorry. Like I I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. So um Nick returned to Springfield and they kept talking and then well, Gypsy and her mother were away at a doctor's appointment. She had given Nick all of the tools. They decided they were going to kill Dee Dee when she went to bed. So he returned to Springfield, once again funded by Gypsy. And she gave him duct tape, gloves, and a knife. Like, left them out for Nick while they were away to doctor's appointment. And then when they got home... They waited for Dee Dee to go to sleep. Well, first her and Gypsy painted their nails. Gypsy painted Dee Dee's nails and Dee Dee painted Gypsy's nails. Nice. And it's weird because you see the emotional maturity of Gypsy obviously has been stunted (laughs) for whatever reason, probably a million. But you see when she's texting him saying or messaging saying come in like you know i'm gonna leave this stuff for you she's like i'm painting my nails dark pink yeah like like, she says that in the middle of the plan of of killing her mother (laughs) so so once Dee Dee fell asleep gypsy went and hid in the bathroom and she says she curled up in the fetal position and covered her ears and she could just hear her mom screaming. She said she screamed her, her name yeah. and please help me. And Nick stabbed Dee Dee 17 times with the knife. Passion killing. Yeah. Obviously, because again, you're trying to protect the woman that you love from the person that is essentially ruining her life and making her ill and bringing a lot of bad stuff on her. So I think that imagine being with someone for two years and you know, you really grow to love them and then find out that all this horrible stuff is happening to them. There's going to be some passion behind well, that. Well, and they also had weird conversations where Nick said that he was a vampire. And <laughs> yeah. Nick actually said that he wanted to rape Dee Dee also when he killed her. And Gypsy Ugh. said uh, she traded herself in and that... Yeah, like, I'll let you rape me. Yeah, I'll let you rape me, not my mom. So there was definitely some twisted, weird dynamics in their relationship, too. Like, it wasn't just, like, a Romeo and Juliet love story. There was some fucked upness in there, too. So after he killed Dee Dee, um, the two went and had sex in Gypsy's room. And then they took $4,000 in cash that Dee Dee had been keeping in the house, mostly from... Um, Rod's child support checks and they fled to a motel outside of Springfield where they stayed for a few days and there's video of that yeah the best part is before they left they actually mailed oh the, the knife, knife. The, the murder weapon they put it in with the money and all that stuff like they put a bunch of stuff in an envelope and mailed it to Nick go to John's house where his where he was living with his mom and his step his stepdad and his siblings and they just thought that he's you know because he's what at this time 23 years old yeah so I mean okay, yes, he has a very high-functioning disability, but that doesn't stop people from doing a lot of things, and your parents aren't going to stop you from living your life. And obviously they don't think you're out killing your girlfriend's mom in another state, so... (laughs) No, and they had put a story together for his parents, too. So they went and stayed at a hotel for a couple days while they planned, and then they went to a Greyhound station 
and several witnesses met them on the bus. It was, they were really easy to remember because Gypsy had like a big long blonde Disney wig on basically. Yeah. Well, and that's what even the, because when the stepdad is interviewed, they're, you know, they're asking because really they seemed completely normal. They didn't have any, cause uh, okay. You have to imagine the relief that Gypsy's probably feeling on top of that, obviously natural guilt because her mom was just murdered but look at all the shit her mom's done to her for a whole life so I and think... she's walking around she's not in a yeah, wheelchair yeah. like hallelujah yeah that's like jail on its own right is so when they asked the parents yeah what did you think like they said well we thought that her and her mom were homeless and she was just coming to move in with us because she needed a better way to get out of a situation and she was nick's girlfriend but we thought she was really nice and everything she just looked weird in her in her weird wig. wigs that she would wear. <laughs> then it was the 14th. So they, they killed her on the 10th. And then it was the 14th when, because of the Facebook post, someone yeah. finally went to the house and so, discovered Dee Dee's body. And and Gypsy didn't. Gypsy actually was the one that made the post. Yeah. And she did it because she said she kept thinking about Dee Dee laying there forever and no one discovering her. So. Because nobody probably would have. Yeah. So they, D Gypsy made the post, that bitch is dead. And then the neighbors, you can, you can actually go through the thread and see all the comments <laughs> still. And it's really surreal to see all that. Like, I can't believe it's even still up where they're like, oh, what about our friends? Those kind kind people and let so, me know if gypsy's okay yeah someone's like sorry to break it to you but <laughs> gypsy gypsy actually murdered her mother yeah like it was just nobody had any idea at all like even her own father thought she had muscular dystrophy yeah. and leukemia and all this stuff and when Dee, Dee was first discovered murdered they initially, everyone said, oh my God, they've kidnapped her poor, sick, disabled daughter who can't walk. And I don't know how they did it because her wheelchair is still here. And the police went and gave a con uh, news conference, the chief of police in Springfield. And he just wanted to warn everybody before they saw it firsthand. Yeah. Like things are not always as they appear and everyone needs to get ready for stuff they're about to see. And then it flashes forward to um, the arraignment of Gypsy Rose, and she's just walking into the jail. Well, she was or so her and go to John obviously like so they fled. They went to his house, like you said. Yeah. And then they were arrested by the sixteenth because it's pretty easy to track if you're not going to cover your steps and you're not going to cover your trail and your tracks. Yeah. Obviously, the police are going to be able to find you. It's two kids essentially with a disability. They just killed their mom or killed her mom. And, and they just got their IP address off of Facebook. Yeah, which is super easy to go through the computer. You don't even think. Like, if they had trashed the computer, it might not have been as easy. Maybe they would still think Gypsy was missing, you know? So, yeah, so the 16th, they're arrested. And he, again, he's pretty transparent. He's pretty honest. He has no filter. So he says right away, he, and everything he starts with, well, honestly, uh, she, she asked me to kill her mom. Honestly, you know... You know what? Let's play the interview. Can you tell me this first? Did Gypsy know that you were going to kill her mother? Um, honestly, she asked me to. Okay. So, so Gypsy knew you were going to do it because Gypsy asked you to. Yes. Why did she ask you to do that? Because she felt it was her only way to be with me. Okay. She felt like if, if you killed the mom, then that's the only way she could be with you. Yeah. Do you know the mom's name? I don't know her real name. All I know is that she goes by Dee Dee. Dee Dee, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you could tell right away. He's like, well, honestly, <laughs> like as soon as he was... Yeah, you can kind of get a read yeah. from his personality for sure. And then he goes on to admit that he wanted to rape her, oh, but yeah, he, he says everything. As soon as they ask him, because they say, you know, did you... Because Gypsy... Be when Gypsy first was interviewed, she was denying everything. Oh, she my was, God. My mom's dead. No what? Way. What? And so they obviously right away were like, hey, we know that you did it. Because they went through the whole computer. They went through all yeah. of it. There's another thing, too, that 
because obviously right away she was not honest with everybody like her dad his wife everybody she said no no i didn't i think she put most of the blame on nicholas and didn't take any responsibility but there's a part in the documentary where they start reading out at her at her like um the pre-trial preliminary yeah. hearing they start reading out all the messages between them and you see gypsy like it's like she's like a little kid she like turns around with her big bubbles glasses on and she looks like looking at them like oh no because now everybody knows busted, busted. but again i think because of what she's been through everybody was pretty pretty understanding that she would do that like even her family they say like you know does someone want Dee Dee's ashes and the family's like throw them down the toilet like they nobody don't want... wants these ashes no. those ashes are evil yeah <laughs> so if the whole consensus is that the people closest to her knew that she was the most evil and again who does that to their own kid I think it was pretty yeah it's um... actually really sad though that there was only this whole time of Gypsy's whole life, there was only one anonymous phone call made to police. Yeah. About the fact that um, Dee Dee was lying about all this stuff and that she was doing this to Gypsy. And the police came to call CPS and checked it out for like basically five minutes. But, but she had all the backup, right? She had all of the But it's so sad documents. that the family said, like at the end, Dee Dee's family, like her nephew and her dad and everyone are like, we're not surprised. No. We're like, she finally pissed Gypsy off enough or abused her enough. We're not surprised she killed her. Yeah. No one was surprised by it. I think the other parts of the family, like, rod and like the further family away that didn't really know the whole story they definitely were surprised and they were even more flabbergasted when gypsy walked into the courtroom the yeah. first time even the neighbors right because yeah. the neighbors had helped her from went from her wheelchair and to you know helping them grocery shop helping them do everything because again they look like this poor mother daughter worst luck in the world yeah exactly how could she have leukemia seizures be blind be deaf be disabled be all Drooling. these things yeah be well not anymore because she got her salivary yeah. glands removed but it's like this is anybody if you had this as your neighbor like you would want to help them do anything you could to help them yeah you'd feel just so terrible for them no and then you'd feel even more fucking terrible when you found out that the whole thing was just a facade lie like yeah. a huge con yeah Gypsy was actually, eventually, she was offered a plea deal because I think they, they took the time to actually look into everything that had happened to her and well, see. Well, once they, once they just, like, even looked for five minutes about, like, even before anything, when the, when the police chief had to come on to a press conference and say, everybody be warned, things are not as they appear. Like, it was pretty evident that the whole thing was super fucked up. Yeah, so she was offered a plea deal uh, for secondary murder for 10 years. Yeah. And she had to serve she 85% one, yeah. of that. Well, she was sentenced in 2016. So a year after it had happened. And what did you say she gained? Like she was so malnourished that she gained what? 14 pounds immediately when she went into jail. They say most people that go into jail lose like a lot of weight because the food is so terrible and they're depressed and everything else but gypsy actually gained 14 pounds super rapidly because she was completely malnourished and she was eating from a fucking feeding tube like imagine how good any food would taste to you well that and just the thought of knowing that you wouldn't have to be subjected and that everybody knows the truth now and that yeah. everybody is going to protect you or i mean you protected yourself from that happening again as bittersweet as it is and you could tell in interviews that she has a lot of guilt because that's the only mother she ever knew right so yes there was all these horrible things but it's like that what is that stockholm syndrome yeah. where you are with your abuser so much that that's uh, human contact is a necessity for life you need to have human contact to thrive and to so it, think the only person you're spending your time with is this person that's abusing you but you don't know any different because they've been doing it to you since you were three months old and you're 23 years old at this time so that's 23 years of abuse you don't know really that it is abuse no and it took like she she had the 
idea that she needed to get away from her, but she didn't know the whole extent of it until later on. Yeah. And even now, she says it's better to live in jail than it was to live at home. Let's play a clip from Gypsy. Gypsy Rose Blanchard and her boyfriend, Nicholas Godijon, are both charged with premeditated murder. If she can walk, what else has been a lie all these years? Are you glad your mother's dead? No, sir. I'm glad that I'm out of that situation. She would force me to be in a wheelchair, force me to go to doctor's appointments that I didn't need. Did you understand that you being sick was necessary to keep up what she built? Because you got a house, donations, you got different things for people for being sick. So that was a source of income for her. And I had no idea that I was a part of that. You didn't know that you were a cash cow? No. My mother told the doctors that I was mentally incompetent. She's got the mind of like a, a child. She told me if I was to contact anybody and tell them that she would take a hammer to my fingers. And she had taken handcuffs and a dog leash and tied it together and tied me to the bed. I just don't understand how somebody can do this to their child. I trusted her so much. She told me that she loved me, that she was trying to protect me. The only person I needed protection from is her. She says it best. The only person she really needed protection from was herself. So imagine if she never met Nicholas go to John. Like she would still she probably would still be, be in that. Yeah. So that's why this case is so weird because as much as we here on Murder with My Mother like to advocate for the victims, Gypsy was the victim for 23 years of her life before her mom was murdered. Yes, but it's almost like she's going to be out by the time she's 32 years old. And that makes me happy because she's going to be able to live like she's this never new had life. a life. Exactly. Like, I, I honestly, my personal feelings of it is that. I don't even think she should have gone to jail. I think Me neither. she should have been in like intensive psychological rehabilitation, but I really don't think she should have gone to jail. Yeah. I mean, now you think all of her first life lessons now are being learned, are being in, jail. learned in jail. Yeah. So she's learning from other criminals and you know, like what, what, I don't even know what's going to happen when she gets out. Hopefully she's received some of the help that she needs but I'm not really aware of what's up. She seems like she's a pretty kind-hearted person. Mm -hmm. Well, and Nicholas Godijon was sentenced to life in February of 2019 because he was convicted of first-degree murder. So because, I mean, I think also he shouldn't have even had that no. because of his, he was, he has, he's autistic, right? He has Asperger's and he was essentially protecting the person that he loves by this evil john gacy looking motherfucker well and he also ha was a vampire and he had like, <laughs> multiple, multiple personalities. personalities so maybe it wasn't even him you know yeah but yeah so that was the case of <laughs> that was intense yeah so if you do get a chance watch uh on i watched it on crave it's called mommy dead and dearest you can and... even find it on youtube if you don't have yeah. it on crave mm-hmm so just even look into this case a little bit. You know, there's interviews now with Gypsy and she's like, you know, it's it's sad because she's got this long hair and she's beautiful and she, you know, she's very well spoken. And she she says, too, that she was so heavily medicated on the night like she was taking. I don't know if you've ever done Xanax, but I haven't had Xanax, but I know it like <laughs> takes all your feeling away. Well, like, yeah. And that's numb. the thing. It's like a it, it completely numbs you to the point where you have no no emotion so i think that if you're being medicated so heavily it's probably this weird blur to tell right from wrong and to be so desperate in a situation that you would you don't care what you do to get out of it it's actually even amazing that she was able to navigate going on the computer and like yeah. planning stuff and everything with the amount of serious medications that she was always on like that's yeah. crazy yeah. and i really believe that I mean, nature took its course in this case. I don't ever <laughs> think that it's like, I don't condone killing people, but no. uh, I think that bitch is dead is a good. Yeah. <laughs> well, and the, if anybody, thing. obviously you guys are listening, you guys are avid listeners of ours, you know, this is very out of the norm for us. Yeah. We're caring and we usually try to bring you the victim's side of the story so that you can get to know the person that was forced to leave the world. And I think we've done that. Also, with shedding some light on Dee Dee, but 
unfortunately, she wasn't the bright line light that shone out of most of no. the victims that we've done. <laughs> no, she was not. She was a fucking dim, dim light. Even her family wanted to flush her ashes down the toilet. Yeah. So that's saying a lot. So that was the episode 19. Next week is the big number the week two. After. Zero. Oh, yeah, the week <laughs> after is the the big 20. And Danica's going to be working on something spectacular for Ooh. that. I can't wait to hear what it is. Well, you'll have to wait and see. Uh, we've had some crazy things going on um, in our neighborhood. Well, in our area also. So in January... There was a woman that went missing uh, named Trina Hunt. It's getting attention pretty much from, I think, a lot of places in the world. And it's very close to us. It's in a little district, probably about 20 minutes from where I live. Mm -hmm. And Trina Hunt was a 48-year-old woman whose husband claimed that she was just home while he went to work and when he got home from work she was missing and he reported her missing and a bunch of stories came out later that they had gone to another area and after months so she was at the time it was january missing 18th, for three months missing, yeah. almost and then all of a sudden you know something started to come out where for me i knew that he it was reported, it was suspicious there was some suspicious stuff that happened so we are following that. Um, unfortunately, Trina's remains were found on March 29th, and they were identified in April. Um, actually, they were identified May 1st, I want to say. Yeah. But um, they were located far from her home and in Hope, which is about an hour um, east of where we are. And then some pieces have kind of fallen together where her husband, who has the stupidest name in the world, Ian, sorry if your name's Ian, but... We're gonna call him. We're gonna call him Lion because I'm pretty sure that's what he's doing. Because there's no way a lot of these things do not fit. So, I mean, obviously we are a murder podcast and we are true crime connoisseurs and we are following this one because it's right in our own backyard. So. And we're just waiting now. Um, the speculation is that he will imminently be arrested. I'm assuming they don't have enough concrete evidence yet, but there's the story speaks for itself. It's really, really hurtful to Trina's family and to all the people that were hopeful. I mean, I was even signed up on the search group on Facebook and uh, they were searching for months mm -hmm. in the wrong area because... Well, because he somehow forgot to tell them that they actually went on a digital detox trip to Hope the weekend before she went missing, which prior to going missing, that's probably something... Yeah. That you should discuss. But So we are definitely keeping an eye on that and we'll be reporting to you as soon as there's some developments. Maybe we can do like a little update at the end of our segments if anything new comes to light. But we are going to do Trina some justice by reporting her story as it unfolds. And she just seemed like such a beautiful person and I feel really connected to her. Like this story has been on my mind a lot, actually. Yeah, we're on the support groups and, you know, what was uh, Bring Trina Home group is now Bring Trina Justice because she deserves that. And there's big billboards everywhere. And, you know, hopefully we can bring Lion Ian out of the woodworks and, you know, get some kind of justice for her because that is what she, the least that she deserves. Totally. So, without dragging on for too long, um, we love you guys, and we will talk to you in two more weeks. When we bring you episode 20 of Murder With My Mother. The true crime podcast where I talk murder with my mother. Have a good one, guys. See you later. Bye. Bye.